I have made mistakes in my life. My job in this round, gentlemen, is to ask you each about an issue that could be a problem for you down the road in this campaign. Governor Pawlenty, I'm going to start with you. In January, you told me that you signed a bill to promote renewable energy sources, but, and here's the quote, we never did sign a bill relating to cap and trade. Let's look at your record, sir. In 2007, the bill you signed required, required a task force to recommend how the state could adopt cap and trade. In 2008, you said, I support a reasonable cap-and-trade system at the federal level, and you made this ad for the Environmental Defense Action Fund. Let's watch, sir. Do we have to? If we act now, we can create thousands of new jobs in clean energy industries before our overseas competitors beat us cap greenhouse gas pollution now. Governor... <laughs> I told you it was going to be a problem for you down the line. Uh, <laughs> you now say that that was a dumb mistake, but weren't you, in fact, far more committed to cap and trade over those years than you now let on? Uh, Chris, what I said to you on that day and what I've said many other times is this. We did uh, consider and sign into law legislation in Minnesota that would study cap and trade, but we didn't impose it. We signed up to look at it, to review it, to study it, to join with other states to look at it, and we did. And what I concluded subsequently is it's really a bad idea. And this My question to you is how do you justify commenting on limiting health care when you vetoed my organization, the Marijuana Policy Project, Medical Marijuana what Bill. What's the name of it? The Marijuana, marijuana Policy marijuana Project. The Mar uh, Medical Marijuana Group. That's correct. Yeah. In May of 2009, you vetoed that bill, which would have kept government out of the doctor patient relationship and kept terminally ill Minnesotans out of jail. Yeah. Well, I stood with law enforcement on this issue in Minnesota, the almost unanimous sheriffs and the law enforcement community in Minnesota were opposed to legalizing marijuana in Minnesota, and I opposed it as well. And I think I vetoed at least one of the bills, if not more than one. A growing number of Republicans are more skeptical of these foreign involvements, but I want you to take what Congressman Paul just said there, and let's focus on one. He said no bombing in Yemen. The strikes in Yemen have been targeted at al-Qaeda leaders, al-Qaeda operatives, who the President of the United States, who happens to be a Democrat in this case, uh, views as serious threats against this nation. Do you agree with Congressman Paul there, or do you agree with President Obama and the strikes? Let me first say to John, I know I speak for everyone in this room and all across this country when we say we're grateful to you. We wouldn't have the country without people like you and your sons. Thank you very much. And beyond that, John, I start with this perspective. On September 11, 2001, individuals and groups killed 3,000 or so of our fellow Americans. They would have killed not 3,000, but 30,000 or 300,000 or 3 million or 30 million if they could have, if they could have had the capability to do that in their hands. And as soon as they get it, they'll try. And the first duty of the President of the United States and the leader of this nation and Commander-in-Chief is to make sure this nation is safe. So you bet. If there are individuals I have intelligence on or groups in Yemen that present a threat to our security interests in that region or to the United States of America, you can bet they'll hear from me and we'll continue those bombings. All right, let's stay on foreign policy. And I Reagan, Senator Al Gore ran for president, pledging to raise taxes and increase spending, pushing his liberal values. And Al Gore found a cheerleader in Texas named Rick Perry. Rick Perry helped lead Al Gore's campaign to undo the Reagan revolution, fighting to elect Al Gore president of the United States. Now, America must decide who to trust. Al Gore's Texas cheerleader a different motivation to help the drug company Merck, a donor to Perry's campaign. I raise about $30 million, and if you're saying that I can be bought for $5,000, i am offended. The company actually gave nearly $30,000 to his campaigns and another $300,000 more to hire his former chief of staff as a lobbyist. Perry's campaign says none of that influenced his decision. Even so, it's a decision many conservatives just don't like.
Stop fighting these wars that are about 30 or 40 years old. <laughs> Mr. Kane. Just, right. just, Senator Santorum, I got a question for you. Well, I, as the author of the Iran Freedom Support Act, which he is criticizing, because I authored it when I was in the United States sanction, that, the Senate would actually impose sanctions on Iran because of their nuclear program. Iran is not Iceland, Ron. Iran is a country that has been at war with us since 1979. Iran is a country that has killed more American men and women in uniform in, in Iraq and Afghanistan than the Iraqis and the Afghanistans have. Afghanistan has had. The, Ira the Iranians, Why I, the please? Iranians, the Iranians are, are the existential threat to the state of Israel. You ask the, you ask the Israelis what keeps them up at night. It's the Iranians funding of Hamas and Hezbollah okay. 30, and the support of Syria. 30 seconds. And the reason, hold on, let me finish. The no, no, there's, there are rules here, sir. Yeah, I know there are rules, and you guys have been giving these guys a lot of time and not a whole lot of time you, to you be, so let me answer the you question. You have a question coming. Okay. The, the, no, senator, the senator is wrong on his history. We've been at war in, in, in uh, Iran for a lot longer than 79. We started it in 1953 when we sent in a coup, installed the Shah, and the reaction, the uh, blowback came in 1979. It's been going on and on because we just plain don't mind our own business. That's our problem. <laughs> that they weren't going to be taking away our arms uh, by ringing those bells and, and um, making sure as he's riding his horse through town to send those warning shots and bells that uh, we were going to be secure and we were going to be free. Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? In what respect, Charlie? The Bush, well, what, do you, what do you interpret it to be? His worldview. No, the Bush doctrine enunciated in September 2002 before the Iraq war. I believe that what President Bush has attempted to do is rid this world of Islamic extremism, terrorists who are hell-bent on destroying our nation. There have been blunders along the way though. There have been mistakes made and with new leadership and that's the beauty of American elections, of course, and democracy is with new leadership comes opportunity to do things better. I believe that there is a plan for this world, and that plan for this world is for good. I believe that there is great hope and great potential for every country to be able to live and be protected with inalienable rights that I believe are God-given, Charlie, and I believe that those are the rights to life and liberty and the but, pursuit of happiness. That, in my worldview, is a grand, but, the grand. We now are a nation known to start war. We feel compelled because of our insecurity that we have to go over and attack these countries to maintain our empire. We have over 700 bases, we are in 130 countries, and they're talking about bombing Iran. It is such a dramatic change from what is truly American and truly constitutional. I don't want to run the world. The Constitution doesn't give me the authority to run the world. We ought to mind our own business is what we need to do. Overseas, wasted money. This is a continuation of a revolution. It is a peaceful revolution. It's up to you to spread this message around this country. This is an American cause. It's a cause of freedom. There's something going on in this country, and it's big. Spread the message. Thank you.